Hello everybody, Prow here, and welcome to a Minecraft tutorial on keeping it simple. And today's keeping it simple, we are going to look at getting your world started and finding the right way to do that. So we all pretty much start out our worlds the same way. We start out by doing things like this, punching trees for wood, punching animals for food, and killing sheep so we can make our first bed and go to sleep when it turns nighttime because we don't want to get killed by monsters. Let's also not forget the infamous dirt hut, dirt hut because it is turning nighttime. And last thing we want to do is get caught out here with a whole bunch of monsters that are going to try to eat our faces. And I'm almost out of dirt, which is not good. But if you can survive the night, it would be a good idea to go find yourself a better place to live. And that's what today's video is all about. Now the cave is probably the easiest and safest way to start out in your world. You can place down some torches, block off entrances, give yourself a safe, a safe spot while you get started in your Minecraft world without really having to do a lot of early building. Really good way to get going quick. Uh, but to really get a good start, you need to add in all the essentials to really get you that early game boost so you can build all the amazing things you have planned. So we're going to go over some of those right now. And as you can see, we've already found a cave. Now, for the sake of doing this quickly and efficiently with you guys, I've switched over to creative mode, but we're going to walk through all the steps you need to do to really take care of lighting up this cave and making it a safe place that's going to work for you. First of all, you're going to want to kill these guys because he's going to eat your face. Um, you, you're going to want to try to put down as many torches as you can around your cave to light it up. That way, no monsters can spawn in here. You see we have coal make sure you get yourself a stone pickaxe and mine out some of this coal that you find early on that way you can make torches also make sure you have a nice good wood supply that way again you can make yourself torches as well but once you find the right cave there's a few things you're going to want to do first of all you need to know no cave is going to be perfect you're probably going to have to mold this thing to fit the needs that you're going to have my first tip is actually to make sure you don't have too many entrances and exits to your cave the cave I found has too many of them. So instead of just leaving it and not using it, we just block a couple of them off. But now no mobs can get in there, but I wanna still get over to that side I just blocked off. There we go. I now have access. Make the cave work for you because it's not always easy to find a good cave. Also, when you make your world, if you didn't uh, already do it, make sure you have show coordinates on. You see in the top left hand corner of my screen, we got coordinates there. Those are important. You're going to want to write those down or take a screenshot of them because if you get lost while you're out caving or exploring, it might not be easy to find your cave again. Writing down those coordinates is important. If you started your world without coordinates turned on, you can simply type in slash game rule show coordinates true and that'll turn your coordinates on. Now for the essentials, you're going to want to make sure you have a few things if you don't already have them. You want to make sure you have some stone tools and have yourself some torches, maybe some armor. I don't have any armor because um, you need to get started on things. You should hopefully be finding some iron. Go ahead and mine all of that out that you can. And then you need to get yourself as much of that as you can because we need to actually start upgrading to some iron tools, iron, hopefully some iron armor and things as well. Go ahead and explore the close areas of your cave now if you need to. Make it a little bit easier to move around by adding in some cobblestone here and there and get all of that iron because we are about to start smelting it. And go ahead and get yourself set up with all of the basic supplies you're gonna need. You're gonna need a crafting table. Or you're gonna need to have some cobblestone, make a furnace or two. We'll go ahead and plop a couple of these guys down for now. We'll throw some coal in there, half a stack there, half a stack there, throw half our iron in. Maybe throw some of that food in that we got earlier as well. That way we can cook that and eat that because we kind of need to keep our hunger bars up, right? Once your iron done, is done cooking, go ahead and make yourself some iron armor. Get a, at least an iron pickaxe, maybe an iron sword. That way you can defend yourself and make a shield. A shield is going to be one of the most valuable tools that you can have early in the game because if you hold down that shift button, that or whatever it is on whatever system you're playing on, um, it's going to block for you and that will make it so no attacks that are coming from the front of you can hit you good easy way to stay alive it'll also even block creeper uh, blasts as well now again I'm back in the creative version uh, mode because we are going to set up ourselves a little bit of a storage area you can kind of see in our cave I just found a good area that was kind of sort of flat and I'm starting to carve out space because we need room to do things so we're gonna knock some of that stuff out right there probably want to make sure this stays lit up kind of well so we'll throw in a couple extra torches around and we're going to actually make this into a little makeshift temporary chest area so um, i personally like to go ahead and just carve myself a little hole right here and then 
we'll go ahead and throw down a few chests for now we don't have to go too crazy with it six will be good for now and you guys can start organizing this whatever way you want to maybe you want to put all food items in one all blocks that you get from mining in one all of your valuable oh that's not gonna open because there's blocks up there um, all of your valuable items miscellaneous items mob drops etc stay organized early on because if you don't you're not going to be organized later on and it's going to be a headache another solid recommendation i have for you guys this is going to help out a lot early on is you want some type of a furnace system that can automatically do the things that you need it to do we're not going to need to know or have a lot to do this we're just going to make it simple we're going to have a couple of chests right here and we are going to have you're going to need to make some hoppers uh to make hoppers just get some iron and, and get some wood uh, and some chests i mean and we're going to go ahead and put two hoppers facing back into there and we'll make that hopper face that way and that hopper face that way so now all the items to get cooked are going to automatically go in this chest and if we want to automatically put fuel in these guys all we need to do is go ahead and well, actually this is going to be how you automatically load them put some hoppers facing straight down and then go ahead and you could put a couple chests here and a couple chests here to fill up and then lastly, if you want to automatically put fuel in them as well, you can knock out this back wall like I'm doing here. And if you run hoppers into the back of furnaces, you could put your fuel right back here. Um, I would recommend go ahead and throw in a couple chests like that. Or you can also throw a hopper on top of that one, a hopper on top of that one. We'll knock out the ceiling right here and throw in one right there that way you only have to throw it all in one chest instead of throwing it in both it's up to you depends on how many hoppers you guys have just set it up the bottom section or automate it as much as you want but this will make life really easy for you as i can demonstrate here we'll go ahead and grab some food so again i can go ahead i can throw my coal in this it will evenly go between all of these furnaces right here and i can throw half of my mutton in there half of my mutton in there and as you can see everything lit up nice and quick and then as it cooks it will place itself down here in the chest just like so two and then three four nice easy way to organize your furnaces without having to spend a lot of time or effort now it's time to get yourself set up for a permanent food source food is one of the most important things you need to do early game to get yourself a good start if you've done any kind of exploring out in the wild you've probably broken some grass either on purpose or on accident if not go ahead and do so now because you're going to want to get seeds the more you can get the better um, because we are going to make an area where we can get lots of food and when you go to select your area wherever it's going to work for you is perfectly fine i think we're going to keep things kind of close to our storage area here so we're actually going to dig out a room right here so now we have a big room i do suggest going this big because we grows kind of slow this room is 18 blocks across by 18 blocks across and we need to go through we actually need to replace the entire floor with dirt so get yourself plenty of dirt and start filling whether you do this size or smaller size you're going to need plenty of dirt and now that we got that dirt floor in we are going to set this up in a particular way because of how hydration works so what we're going to do is we're going to go to a corner right here corner and we're going to count out five spaces diagonally one two three four and we're going to knock out that fifth block and we're going to throw in a stair and we're going to waterlog it we're using a stair that way you don't you don't fall in it because you don't want to have to fall in the water and then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and go out one two three four one two three four one two three four and in all directions just like that and this right here is the amount of space that a waterlogged block or water in general can hydrate land meaning that this hydrated land will be able to not only have vegetables plants uh, planted on it and grow but when it's properly um, when it's both properly hydrated and it has plenty of light it will actually grow faster or sometimes your light level could be so low it won't grow at all so make sure you're well lit make sure you have your water in and go ahead and do that to all four corners so once you have all the land hydrated you can go ahead and start planting um we're doing wheat here because wheat you can definitely find you can easily go ahead and get some seeds from grass and start planting away um, i do highly recommend though if you can find potatoes use potatoes too 
They're gonna want one, one on one wheat anyways because we're not doing this just to get some bread to eat for now. But also it'd be nice to have some wheat to feed to cows or sheep and be able to breed them up because they're gonna be a lot better food source a little bit later. For now though, if we can plant enough wheat, we're gonna have a good food source now, which is gonna be bread. And then you probably aren't gonna have a whole ton of seeds at first, right? Like you might have just this many seeds. You might even have less than that. So it's gonna take you some time of coming in and checking every once in a while and knocking out the grown up wheat and taking those seeds and planting more and more and more until you get this whole thing filled up. So it could be a little rough going early on, but once you have this thing filled in, it's gonna to be totally worth it. And just kind of do some mining close by. If you have to go get a snack, leave your game on, put yourself in a protected area, let the, let the game sit and let this stuff grow. And also not only do we do our wheat farm, I threw in a potato farm for you guys too. As you can see here, uh, we worked with the train because right, right above us there's no not there yeah there's like open floor from like another part of our cave so we, we dug down we, we worked with it right and we have a well-lit room here this is a upside down waterlogged stair so that way i can put a torch on top of it we got potatoes growing because that way once those potatoes grow up we can throw those guys in the furnace and we can get ourselves some baked potatoes which is a great food source but for now we got ourselves some bread now once you are all set up there and you're you're kind of well organized at this point my recommend how is it raining inside of the cave water coming like in here um <laughs> once you're all organized uh i think now is a good time for you to go top side you probably want to get yourself about a half stack which is 32 or maybe even a full stack of 64 of wood do a little bit of exploring get other things that you may be looking for or need but ultimately we need to get ready to go mining and now it's time to go mining. A successful mining trip means only bringing in things that you're going to need. So you see here, I have the essentials. I got the armor I have, I got my shield, I got a crafting table, I have furnaces, I have water, a sword, one of each type of uh, tool, especially gotta have that iron pickaxe. We got some torches to light some things up along the way. A couple of building blocks is good to have early on. The bucket of water is to make sure that you don't die in lava. Easy to get rid of lava by just pouring water beside it to turn it off to obsidian. And I, I, I forgot to grab it. I'm still in creative mode right now, guys. I'm still in creative mode. Uh, we need to have our wood. I told you guys get a stack of wood. I meant it. Get yourself a stack of wood because that way as we go mining, we can actually create sticks so we can create more torches and we can create sticks so we can create more iron pickaxes because as we get iron and things, what we'll do is we'll put down our furnaces. We'll smelt our iron up make ourselves new picks, make ourselves new armor if needed, fill in the rest of our armor. And it's just a better way of keeping organized as you go down. That way you guys can stay down there for a lot longer than you would otherwise. So now it's time to get to mining. Now there's a couple different ways for you to go caving and do your first mining session. If your cave has access to keep going down into the world, I highly advise to explore. This is gonna be your best way to get, especially a whole lot of iron and a lot of other goodies too, honestly, without really tearing through your pickaxe too fast. But if your cave doesn't, you got two options. Go find a cave that does, or build, that wasn't very smooth, or build a, or dig out a staircase going all the way down to Y level 11. If you're wondering what Y level 11 is, again, if you look up at the top left-hand corner where the coordinates are, that middle coordinate, the one that says 57 right now, as you go down, that goes down. You wanna get down to all the way to 11 because that is where the lava level starts, but you won't get flowed on by the lava because it will be at the foot level and we're gonna make use of this water bucket. So the idea here is simple, dig a straight tunnel until you find a cave system and then explore it. Collect all the goodies along the way, like some redstone right there. And if you see any lava, go ahead and just like this, put a water bucket down. Um, I'm in creative still, so you would pick it back up with your empty bucket, but I'm just gonna get rid of it here. That way you don't have any risk of falling into lava and you'll keep going down, uncovering all sorts of goodies. You'll see lots of redstone, you'll see some coal, you'll see some iron um, and I think was it you'll even run across some diamonds as soon as you get three diamonds guys go ahead and make that diamond pickaxe you're going to want that thing asap and eventually we will go down and we will find a cave system so we have like this way that i've already kind of looked at it but there's a lot of lava along the way but it does eventually open up into a nice cave system again you would just use that method right there placing down the water bucket picking it back up to go through and explore or we have another path we can go through here which i did not see but as you guys can see, we have a mine shaft here. We're actually in a mine shaft area. So if I pop that stuff out, I should be able to peek up here 
but we'll see zombies that would probably try to kill us and we see lots of goodies we, we got some uh, gold we got iron and I have a feeling that if we did a lot of a lot of exploring here we're gonna come away with quite a lot of iron make sure you place down a lot of torches just to keep things lit up and I'm sorry but good luck finding your way out of one of these things if it's a decent sized one I don't care how many tips you follow on put your torch on the right hand side that way you can just turn around and follow your way back because that's the tip most people give works great for most caves a mine shaft not so much because you're going to just run into all sorts of different ups and downs and all arounds and it's not going to be possible but if you get lost in your mine shaft find a good location wherever that may be and just like we did a staircase down just staircase your way back up you guys wrote down your coordinates of your cave before so as long as you have enough durability on your pickaxe which you should because you can make new pickaxes as you find iron and such you're gonna want to go ahead and just dig your way back up to the surface and then head back over to those coordinates uh, one last tip though as you guys are down there mining that Y level 11 that is essentially the best place to find diamonds that's why I told you guys to go down that far so you're likely that all the way down here to find yourself a healthy amount of diamonds now after a healthy mining trip or two you guys probably have more iron and a whole bunch of supplies than you know what to do with right now um, while you were down there you probably saw when we put down those water buckets on the lava it uncovered these blocks obsidian and most of you guys probably know what obsidian is for but now would be a good time if you're thinking of exploring another or at least want to get a portal set up now would be a good time to do so and for those of you that maybe do not know how to set up a proper nether portal it's actually quite easy just find yourself a location put down three blocks three blocks two blocks two blocks and use a flint and steel to set it and that is it you only need 10 blocks of obsidian to make your nether portal we're not going to go in there and explore that's not what this video is about but now would probably be a good time for a lot of you guys to check things out because the nether's a lot different now right we got all sorts of cool things there um, so go ahead and have fun out there and now that we are set up the way that we need to be set up and we can more safely go through explore and do the things we need to do usually it's time to do a little bit of decorating make your place look nice I didn't do a whole lot here we're gonna keep it simple because later I'll have a video that is a little bit more in depth on how to transform a cave and really make it look good but you know we threw some slabs down to make it a little bit easier to walk up and down we threw in some framing around things just some simple oak wood stuff that you guys should be able to get really easy uh, we blocked off our smelter area we, we left access to throwing fuel back here uh, you see that we frame things in with oak again we put some item frames on our chest so we can label them so we know we need seeds we go here if we want our diamonds to make a pickaxe we go there if we need our like random junk stuff we go over here right and we have some more like expandable areas there too we framed up our super smelter we uh, we didn't do anything to the inside of our wheat area but you know now we know it's a wheat area we know that's a potato area and we even got ourselves a little bedroom so we can come in here sleep the night away and maybe have a little special chest here for special goodies we want to keep separate from everything else I don't know and yeah that should take care of everything that you guys need to do to be successful from here it's all on you to figure out where to do where to go what to do um, you are now set up for success you could add more farms like I don't know chicken or cow farm or go conquer the nether or the ender dragon or something from here find a village or start collecting what you need to get your main base going but that part is all up to you it was just my job in this video to help you get there a little bit quicker and a little bit more comfortably I want to thank you guys for joining me on my first keeping it simple tutorial this one was a little extra simple stay tuned we're going to do a lot of fun things from starter houses to detailing caves building basic redstone going over basic mechanics we want to kind of get you guys up to where you know what you're doing and you feel more comfortable and confident in jumping onto bigger projects which i'll still be doing those as well for those that are used to my channel uh this is just going to maybe help other people get to the point where they can do those fun complicated things as well so again, I appreciate you guys dropping by. Hopefully you had fun in this video. If you did, click that like button. There's a subscribe button down there somewhere too, I heard. Maybe maybe click that if you enjoyed the video as well. That actually helps out a ton. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you later. Goodbye.